Hi, I'm Felicia Valenzuela. This is an extended look at the recent visit of U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. One month, 14 days into office, and the Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali-led administration has already made history. The government welcomed United States Secretary of State Michael Richard Pompeo on September 17, 2020. You may recall during the fight for democracy, our March 2, 2020 electoral period, that Mr. Pompeo had made statements, imposed sanctions, and threatened more sanctions on those who sought to stifle our democracy. Today I'm announcing visa restrictions on individuals responsible for or complicit in undermining democracy in Guyana. Foreign Secretary Robert Passad was the coordinator of this visit. He gives us an insight into what it took to make this visit a success. The team at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation uh, is a team that is well versed and capable. We were able to work closely with a number of agencies the Ghana Police Force, the Ghana Defense Force, uh, the Office of the President, um, and even working with the U.S. Embassy in Georgetown in making all the necessary arrangements that allowed us to have a very successful visit by all accounts. We're, we've been known to be a country where we put forward ideas, vision. We've been a leader in a number of multilateral um, institutions, including the U.N., the Commonwealth, CARICOM, um, so we've been always been one of those countries we've been able to articulate a vision, a vision not only for ourselves, but also one that promotes bilateral, multilateral cooperation, making the world a better place in terms of prosperity, in terms of peace, and promoting good neighborly relations. Mr. Pompeo is also the first U.S. Secretary of State to visit Guyana. At State House, the Secretary of State was given an official welcome by His Excellency Dr. Ali and First Lady Arya Ali, Vice President Dr. The Honorable Bar Jagdio, Prime Minister Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips and Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs Anil Nandlal and other government officials. Mr. Pompeo was on a South American hemispheric tour highlighting the U.S. commitment to safeguarding democracy combating the COVID-19 pandemic, revitalizing economies and strengthening security against regional threats. Ghana was the second stop on his tour, landing in Suriname a day earlier. He made stops in Brazil and Colombia to the end of the tour, arriving in Texas on September 20th. On Friday, diplomatic relations between Ghana and the United States strengthened with the signing of two bilateral cooperation agreements. Before we tell you about those agreements, here is President Ali publicly welcoming the Secretary of State to Guyana. On behalf of the government and people of Guyana, I bid Secretary Mike Pompeo a warm welcome to Guyana. This historic visit sends a powerful signal that Guyana is regarded as a responsible member of the hemispheric and international communities. As a sovereign nation, firmly rooted in democratic principles, the rule of law, respect for human rights, and the pursuit of sustainable and equitable development. My government is grateful to the United States government, and in particular, to Secretary Pompeo, for their unwavering support for democracy and constitutional order in Guyana. During the recent political and electoral crisis in our country, Secretary Pompeo's visit serves to remind us that the U.S. will continue to be a steadfast partner as we work with all stakeholders to consolidate our democracy, strengthen our institutions, and pursue a path of unprecedented economic growth and development. Secretary Pompeo's visit, moreover, solidifies the bilateral relationship between Guyana and the U.S. and sets the stage for expanding 
and deepening U.S. cooperation with Guyana. Now on to those agreements. President Ali said he was pleased about the signing of a framework agreement between the U.S. government and the government of Ghana to strengthen energy and infrastructure finance and market building cooperation in the context of the growth in America's initiatives. This agreement will stimulate the enhancement of the business environment for U.S. private sector investment in Guyana, particularly in the fields of energy, both non-renewable and renewables, and infrastructure. The agreement would also pave the way for the U.S. private sector to expand its investment portfolio and partner with Ghana's private sector. This partnership will help to meet our broader infrastructure and downstream development needs, and by extension, drive economic growth and development as well as job creation. On security, both countries deepened efforts in this area. With specific attention to maritime security and joint patrols, to interdict narcotics trafficking. This will also allow us to improve our technical and human capabilities in monitoring Guyana's exclusive economic zone. This augurs well for stronger collaboration and broader technical assistance to help combat both domestic and transnational organized criminal networks. We also look forward to continued and enhanced assistance assistance in the fields of border control, anti-terrorism, cybersecurity, technology transfer, and anti-corruption measures. President Ali said he discussed with the U.S. Secretary of State the two biggest challenges faced by the country at the moment. Combating the COVID-19 pandemic and lifting the economy out of the economic downturn. I'm grateful for the U.S. support to Guyana in helping us to fight the pandemic. I'm confident that there'll be more targeted assistance for our health sector, as well as support for our traditional emerging and new economic opportunities. Since assuming office in August, government has been on an aggressive push to make Ghana safe, reviewing strategies, securing PPEs, ventilators, beds, and other equipment necessary to minimize the threat to our country, all while reopening the economy. His Excellency also discussed with Mr. Pompeo the ban on catfish from U.S. markets. The United States imposed a ban on catfish imports from Ghana and other non-compliant countries in September 2017. Exporters from the various countries were required by the U.S. Food and Safety Inspection Services to provide documentation to verify that their inspection system was equivalent to U.S. standards. I raise with Secretary Pompeo the need to revisit the current export restriction on wild-caught catfish, a product which is a, which is a great demand in the Guyanese diaspora. This market is very important, not only for export earning, but also for the sustenance of the livelihood of the fishing communities. The humanitarian crisis in Venezuela was also discussed by President Ali and Mr. Pompeo. Guyana remains committed to the principles that guide our involvement in the, in, in the Lima Group, particularly our concern about the ongoing and protracted humanitarian crisis in Venezuela. We support and respect the need for free and fair elections in our hemisphere. With urgency, we believe that democratic values and principles should be respected in Venezuela as well. President Ali also took time to thank the United States for its support of Ghana's territorial integrity and sovereignty. You may also recall that Ghana and Venezuela are before the International Court of Justice, ICJ, over a border controversy a portion of our territory that Venezuela has laid claim to. I conveyed my appreciation to, unite, to the United States and the Secretary reiterated his support and that of the United States for Guyana's territorial integrity and sovereignty 
and its call for a timely resolution to the controversy with Venezuela, and respect for the 1899 Arbitral Award. The ICJ is expected to say before the end of the year if it has jurisdiction to hear the case. Speaking publicly at State House on day two of his visit, Mr. Pompeo thanked the President for Ghana's warm hospitality, noting that more visits to strengthen cooperation will occur. You've been great hosts. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, uh, President Ali and his staff for taking such good care of our team. You know, our two countries, the United States and Ghana, have been friends now for over five decades. But this is the first official visit from an American Secretary of State. You have my commitment. It will not be another 50 years. As he addressed President Ali and members of his cabinet, the diplomatic corps, and the media at State House, Mr. Pompeo urged an even closer relationship between the United States and the Caribbean. He had made the call during a previous diplomatic outing in Jamaica. Now is the time to move forward with even closer ties. I meant it then, and this trip, our meetings are proof of that. And, and what a moment to be in Ghana. We, we know the Guyanese people cherish democracy. They cherish freedom. They value free, fair, and transparent elections, just as Americans do, just as all people do. I was proud to publicly support the Guyanese people in their quest to have the results of the election respected. The results certainly took longer than any of us would have wished or hoped, but it was worth fighting for. It was worth fighting to honor the people's sovereign decision. That's indeed, that's indeed what democracy is all about. Congratulations, President Ali. Mr. Pompeo said he was happy with earlier conversations on strengthening relations for the benefit of all Guyanese and all Americans. He also committed on behalf of the U.S. government financial support for a locally-led program for citizen involvement in democracy. We're ready. The United States is ready to be your partner. Your partner of choice as you face big decisions moving forward, especially on energy and future prosperity in your country. That's how Americans will help produce local jobs and sustainable growth for the people of your country. You should know that the United States AID that works as part of the State Department is on the same page too. I'm proud to announce this morning that the agency has committed $3 million for a locally led program for citizens' involvement in the government and a million and a half so that the youth of Guyana will be involved in democracy as well. The U.S. Secretary of State congratulated Guyanese for leading their nation's journey to self-reliance as Guyana became the second Caribbean nation to join the Growth in the Americas initiative. The initiative is a new whole-of-government partnership between the United States and Latin American and Caribbean countries to spur private sector investment in infrastructure, including in projects in energy, transportation, and information and communication technologies. You should be proud of what your government is achieving for you. We just signed a, a new agreement, a new agreement under the Growth in America's initiative. Ghana is the second Caribbean nation to join that agreement. It demonstrates that the United States wants to model the private sector, not state-owned enterprises, because that model, that investment model is superior, will deliver real good things for the people of your country. It'll bring both those jobs, uh, frankly, jobs to America as well, and it'll increase cooperation on environmental issues, just like potential spill responses. On the ban on catfish, Mr. Pompeo said he was confident there could be a positive outcome. The last economic piece, our governments are working on is to increase trade and foreign direct investment here. The president mentioned catfish. I used to catch catfish when I was a young man. <laughs> one, great, one great thing is that we're getting the information that's needed. We'll work with you. We'll put it through the U.S. regulatory process and the WTO review process, and I'm confident we can get a good outcome. Mr. Pompeo also praised the new security agreement with Guyana. Our new security agreement to counter narcotics trafficking, something that has decimated so many nations all across the world, uh, will enter into force on Monday. Our law enforcement, American law enforcement, can now cooperate against traffickers at sea. 
This will make the entire region and Guyana even safer. Speaking of the current situation in Venezuela, the U.S. Secretary of State committed $5 million on behalf of the U.S. government to help Venezuelans in Guyana. We talked about the need for democracy in Venezuela. You've been a strong partner for us on this issue. You've supported statements through the Organization of American States and through the Lima Group. I trust that that cooperation will continue, and I want to express my personal appreciation for Guyana's hosting of the Venezuelans that have crossed inside of your country. During his brief visit, Mr. Pompeo also spoke exclusively with the editor-in-chief of the National Communications Network, Liron Brommel. Ask about his visit to Ghana and the impression that it's in some way to antagonize Venezuela, Mr. Pompeo said his presence in Ghana is to congratulate Guyanese on the enormous success they had in holding a democratic election and a peaceful transition to power. We're proud of what they've done and we think it will do great things for the people of Guyana and for the region. Uh, the, the government wanted me to come down too to talk about all the opportunities there are for the United States to invest and help build out better lives for the people of Guyana. And of course, too, we, we want this for the people of Venezuela as well. We want them to have the very same chance to have a free, fair election for the rule of law, for democracy and for human rights in Venezuela. We, we watch people fleeing, fleeing into Guyana, fleeing into Colombia, fleeing in Peru, Ecuador, people having to flee from Maduro and his brutal regime. Uh, we, we very much want that to change. We want them to have the same opportunities that the people of Guyana have. That's why I came down here today to, to help uh, make sure that the new leadership here in Ghana understood that the United States was a friendly nation with good intentions for their people. Ghana's Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, the Honorable Yu Todd, said Mr. Pompeo's trip to Ghana is an endorsement that Ghana is on the right track. When you look at uh, our governance structure and our inclusive policies and the way we have um, articulated what we will do for the next five years in our manifesto, uh, speak to uh, what Guyana is as, as a nation and what we're going to do for our people. And it's, 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 it's aligned with, with the values and, and the principles that, that the people of America um, have enjoyed for, for centuries. And they, have see, they see us as a, a partner that they can work with in the region. Uh, we have to see it as historic um, and it's a movement in the right direction. Uh, the United States is a traditional partner, um, our largest trading partner. We have a lot of um, ties with America that goes back for generations and this is really opening new vistas for us as Guyanese. So in the areas of security, um, in the areas of uh, foreign direct investment, uh, when we look at uh, developmental aid, uh, we have a lot of programs um, that we're going to roll out. Um, so this visit is really giving a big endorsement to the people of Guyana and the leadership of uh, President Ali and his government that we are exhibiting the right type of attitude and the right type of, of outlook that America embraces. So we have to, we have to see it as a, as a plus for us. U.S. Ambassador to Ghana, Mr. Sarah Ann Lynch, said the visit by Mr. Pompeo was indeed very historic. We were just thrilled to host him as the embassy. Guyana did a wonderful job hosting him. And it really is an important time here as Guyana looks forward to a transformative time, uh, given all the resources that, uh, that it will be um, having in the near future. And we look very much forward to working with Guyana. How was this visit received by other stakeholders? We had some advanced meetings with um, personnel from the U.S. Um, um, Embassy. And the discussion was that the MOU that was signed contemplates investment in three major thematic areas. I think the, it was infrastructure, energy, and a digital economy were the three major areas or, or three thematic areas. For us as the private sector, we are very excited about this because these three areas are critical drivers to the growth of our economy. It's a good thing for Guyanese, our sense of, of security, our sense of stability, 
uh, will be greatly enhanced. And the signing of the Shiprider Agreement, you know, this actually was signed back in 2001. What happened here, this was just an exchange of diplomatic notes, but it's extremely significant because even as we attempt to, to safeguard our, our, um, our EEZ and we, we attempt to um, have an uh, eagle eye, so to speak, an uh, uh, eye in the sky of, um, of the Guyana airspace and the Guyana landmass and Suriname, I think the U.S. coming on to us at this time and signing this agreement gives us an enormous um, uh, new capability to be able to have an overview of our EEZ um, and the security of the rigs on, on, on the high seas and also our borders, our borders with Suriname, with, with Venezuela, with Brazil, um, to help us to understand what is happening in terms of drug running and money laundering and, and all, the, all, the, all the ills that will, that will follow the wealth that this country is embarking on. From State House, where all the discussions occurred, the bonds between Ghana and the United States have no doubt strengthened because of this historic visit. I'm Felicia Valenzuela.